The two candidates for United States Senator from Ohio face off in their first statewide debate. J.D. Vance and Tim Ryan. From your local election headquarters and broadcast across the Buckeye State, this is the Ohio Senate debate. You are looking at a live picture of downtown Cleveland for this very special night of political conversation and debate. We are now four weeks away from Election Day. Early voting in Ohio begins on Wednesday. Good evening. I'm Lou Maglio in the studios of WJW Fox 8. You're watching us on air or online from one of five Next Star media stations in Ohio. We are broadcasting to Cleveland, Columbus, Dayton, Youngstown, and Steubenville, plus partner stations in Cincinnati and Toledo. You've met the candidates taking part in what will be the only statewide debate for Ohio's open U.S. Senate seat. Now let's meet the moderators tonight, Colleen Marshall from NBC4 in Columbus and Joe Tuohy from Fox 8 here in Cleveland. Thank you so much, Lou, and welcome to our candidates and to all of you who are watching across the state. You can follow along using the hashtag OHSENDEBATE. You'll find additional information supporting tonight's questions. Now let's start with a quick rundown of the rules for our debate so you at home can know what to expect. Tonight's debate will be divided into topics with a goal of five minutes of discussion time for each. Moderators will be allowed to jump in to ensure equal time to answer within that five-minute window. This format was proposed by the Ryan campaign and agreed to by the Vance campaign. Now, you might hear the sound of a bell when it's time to move on to the next topic. Each candidate will get one minute for a closing statement. The order was determined by a card draw, J.D. Vance. You get the first question. And we do begin tonight with the state of the economy. Every poll shows the issue of inflation is by far the number one concern among voters. The cost of everything from food to housing to energy is on the rise. Mr. Vance, you have said as far back as July you believe the nation is already in a recession. You blame that on reckless Democratic spending. However, some of these policies, including the infrastructure, infrastructure bill, will provide tens of billions of dollars for things in Ohio, like clean water, airports, and highways. Do you think some of that money is well spent? Well, of course, some of the money is well spent. But when we're talking about $6 trillion, there's a lot of money that isn't well spent. And that's fundamentally the problem with what we've seen out of the Biden administration, is simultaneously they borrowed and spent trillions of dollars that we just don't have, and that's thrown fuel on the flyer, fire of the inflation problem. And at the same time, they've completely gone to war against America's energy sector. And you can't do both of those things at the same time. They're each bad ideas. But when you do both of them at the same time, you're going to get record inflation, which is exactly what you expect to get. Now, Tim Ryan, of course, has supported all of these policies 100 percent of the time. And this really is the contrast on these economic issues between Tim Ryan and myself. I believe we've gone in a fundamentally bad direction over the last couple of years. I think people deserve to go to the grocery store without it completely breaking the bank. Tim Ryan has voted with these policies 100 percent of the time. Every single time he gets an opportunity to stand up for Ohioans, he chooses to bend the knee to his own party. Thank you, Mr. Vance. Congressman Ryan, a similar question to you. You heard it there. Republicans say uh, during the Biden administration, you voted for every one of these spending bills to come out of Washington. They say they're reckless. Do you believe they've contributed to inflation? Well, let's look at what they are. A bipartisan infrastructure bill that's going to create 600,000 jobs here in Ohio. J.D. Vance is against that. Rob Portman, the senator who currently holds the seat, a Republican, helped put that deal together. Look at the CHIPS Act, lands the Intel project that's going to create a $100 billion investment into Ohio that's going to ripple throughout this entire economy. Supply chains, average wage, $135,000 a year. Look at the Inflation Reduc Reduction Act. And of course, J.D. is going to kick this campaign off with misrepresenting my position. In the Inflation Reduction Act, they, we're going all in on natural gas. I've been a natural gas proponent since I've been in Congress. And, and we have to get this right. We need to increase our production of natural gas. I support streamlining the permitting process around natural gas so that we can get it around the country, lower costs for businesses, and ship it to Europe to stick our finger in Vladimir Putin's eye so our allies win. But here's the problem. J.D. Vance has invested into companies in China. The problem we're having now with inflation is our supply chains all went to China. And guys like him have made a lot of money off that. And that is exactly why the supply chains are locked up. I'm working with these bills 
to bring production back to the United States. We are going to talk a little bit about China in the next question for you, Mr. Vance. In your 2016 book, Hillbilly Elegy, you called the idea that all the jobs went to China one of, quote, the lies that we tell ourselves. In this campaign, you have labeled China as the enemy and implied they're taking over jobs and Ohio farmland. Where is that happening, and can you tell us specifically? Well, look, absolutely, China is stealing our jobs. China has stolen a big chunk of our industrial and manufacturing base. What I said in my book is something I still believe today, that that's not the only thing that's going on, but of course it's a huge, big part of the problem. Now you ask, why has China taken a huge amount of America's jobs? Well, one of the reasons is because energy is too expensive. You cannot do modern industrial manufacturing without high quality energy. Tim Ryan just told a big fib. He said he supported Ohio's natural gas industry and he's always done so. And yet Tim Ryan, when he ran for president, was it two years ago, you supported banning fracking, both on public lands and generally speaking. That crushes the Ohio energy sector, and that's one of the reasons why manufacturers are going to China. Another reason Ohio manufacturers go to China is because the Chinese undercut American wages. The only way to really combat that is tariffs, which I've supported. And now Tim Ryan supports, and I'm glad that you do, Tim. But of course, in 2018, 2019, and 2020, you opposed the tariffs that started to bring some of that manufacturing and industrial base back to Ohio. Ohio. China is a big, big issue, but China's problems are exacerbated by our own leadership's failures. Those failures go back 20 years to when Tim Ryan started in Congress. They certainly go back to the last couple of years when Joe Biden took over. Thank you, Mr. Vance. Congressman Ryan, uh, Republicans, as you say, they blame President Biden for a lot of the inflation problems. You told Colleen here in an interview last week, a few days ago, that you, we need new leadership across the board. You don't believe he should run again. Do you think President Biden is to blame for the inflation crisis? Well, I think everybody's to blame. I mean, we're coming out of a pandemic. It's a problem. The question is, are we going to sit around for another 10 years and point fingers? What I've been proposing is a significant tax cut for working people and small businesses. Put money in people's pockets. We can sit here and argue about why it's here. It's a global phenomenon right now. We need to cut taxes for working people. Okay? And the bottom line is, he didn't answer the question. We have our supply chains in Asia. J.D. Vance invested in, in China and, ships product, and companies that ship products back. That's why we can't get out of this inflation problem. And as far as natural gas goes, once again, two questions, two lies uh, from J.D. I have, for my entire career, supported tariffs on China. One of my first bills I had was to penalize China uh, for manipulating their currency. I worked to get tariffs on China's uh, steel coming in. That led to a billion dollar investment in the Youngstown steel mill. And I supported, generally, Trump's position on China in Chinese tariffs. While he's investing in China and making money, I'm trying to fight these guys. And the same with natural gas, because he brought it up. You could go back my entire career. We have two natural gas power plants in my congressional district that I helped us get. And the union that works in the natural gas industry endorsed me. Do you think they're going to endorse me you, if Congress. I'm for banning fracking? And just it's quickly, just not true. Do you want President Biden to run again in 2024? No, I've been very clear. I'd like to see a generational change. Mitch McConnell, Donald Trump, the president, everybody. Like, right. We need a new generation of Gentlemen, leadership. Gentlemen, it's time to move on to a new question. And this is an area where there is a very clear dividing line between the two of you, and it is abortion. Our latest poll shows that this is the number two issue for voters here in Ohio. Representative Ryan, you are campaigning as an abortion rights supporter. You might have to legislate that if you are elected. So what limits, if any, do you support on abortion? I support going back to Roe v. Wade. That was established law for 50 years. And we didn't have all the chaos that we're having now. We read at least a couple articles every week of young people, underage girls who have been raped, or women who have had uh, significant problems with their pregnancy not be able to get help in the state. They got to go to Indiana, they got to go to Illinois, and that's not good enough for J.D. Vance. He supports a national abortion ban in which he wants women to have to get a passport and go to Canada. Like, we've got to have some moderation on this issue. He's got a very extreme position. J.D., you called rape inconvenient, right? That's, rape is not inconvenient. It's a significant tragedy 
And he thinks that we should have Ohio State law, which says if you're raped or incest, uh, pregnant through incest, that you should be forced to have the baby. This is the largest governmental overreach in the history of our lifetime. Complete violation of personal freedom and liberty of women in this state. And I think we should maintain that right, and I think we should make sure that none of the extremists get to the United States Senate. We should codify, codify Roe v. Wade. All right, Mr. Vance, I want to ask you, one of your Republican colleagues, Senator Lindsey Graham, is proposing a 15-week national abortion ban. Is that something you could support at the 15-week point? Well, first of all, I did not call rape inconvenient. Congressman Ryan knows that's not true. But let me just address my, my view very specifically, and I'll answer the question about Lindsey Graham's legislation. So look, I am pro-life. I've always been pro-life. And I, I grew up in a poor family and a poor community. I saw a lot of young women have abortions when I was growing up. And one of the things that always struck me is it felt like a lot of those young women didn't have options. They felt like they didn't have the health care that they needed. We got to fix that. They felt like it would have ruined to have a baby so early, would have ruined their career, their personal lives. We've got to fix that sense too. Uh, I, I, I recognize, of course, that a lot of people are pro choice, that they have a different view on this issue than I did. I was raised by a woman, the woman who saved my life, my mamma, uh, was a woman, an old school Democrat, who believed that abortion should be safe, legal, and rare. That's not Congressman Ryan's view. He says that he wants to codify Roe. He voted for a piece of legislation that would have overturned Roe and required abortion on demand at 40 weeks for fully elective reasons. He also voted for a piece of legislation that would have prevented doctors from providing medical care to babies who survived botched abortions. Now, on the Lindsey Graham bill, my view on this is, generally speaking, Ohio is going to want to have different abortion laws than California, than Texas, and I think, abor I think Ohio should have that right. But some minimum national standard is totally fine with me. We're talking about five-month-old babies, fully formed babies who can feel pain. No civilized country in the world allows elective abortion that late in pregnancy. I don't think the United States should be an exception. Thank you, Mr. Vance. Congressman Ryan, in 2009, uh, you wrote an op-ed describing yourself as, quote, a pro-life member of Congress. Why the change? I had uh, some very personal conversations with women in Ohio uh, who had gone through tragedies, who needed to have abortions for a variety of different reasons. And I just came to realize through the course of these conversations that the government has no place in this uh, matter. That this needs to be left to the woman, it needs to be left to the doctor to make these decisions. And I think, isn't this what we want from our leaders? People who listen, people who learn from experiences and then maybe have a, a change of position. Uh, that to me is, is really important, but we can't ignore the level of extremism that we're hearing from J.D. Vance on this position. No exceptions for rape and incest, right? If you get raped, J.D. Vance and others are gonna say you have to have that baby. State mandated pregnancies for a rape victim? That is so far out of the mainstream, it's not even funny. Let me address let, that, Let me please. go back Be to Mr. Vance to find out about Thank this. You. you have said in the past that you compared uh, abortion to slavery, even in the case of the 10-year-old Ohio girl that made headlines across the country. You said two wrongs don't make a right. It sounds tonight as if you're saying there are some exceptions I would accept. Can you specifically tell us what you might accept sure. as an exception? Look, I've always believed in reasonable exceptions. This is a misrepresentation of my view. But let, let, let's hear it from me, not from Congressman Ryan. Uh, I, I absolutely think the 10-year-old girl, the case that we've, of course, heard a lot about, an incredibly tragic situation. I mean, look, I've got a 9-year-old baby girl at home. I cannot imagine what's that, what that's like for the girl, for her family. God forbid something that, like that would happen. I have said repeatedly on the record that I think that that girl should be able to get an abortion if she and her family so choose to do so. But let's talk about that case. Because why was a 10-year-old girl raped in our community, raped in our state in the first place? 
The thing the media and Congress and Ryan, they talk about this all the time, the thing they never mentioned is that poor girl was raped by an illegal alien, somebody that should have never been in this state in the first place. You voted so many times against border wall funding, so many times for amnesty, Tim. If you had done your job, she would have never been raped in the first place. Do your job on border security. Don't lecture me about opinions I don't actually have. Thank you, Mr. Vance. We do oh, intend to on. get to immigration oh, no. later, but we do want to move on to a new topic here. We want to get into some of the claims made by a by each of you about the other one during the campaign. We are going to start with Mr. Vance here. Uh, Mr. Vance, Tim Ryan says you're a Silicon Valley vulture capitalist who is out of touch with the needs of everyday Ohioans. Explain to voters why you think that's wrong. Well, there are a couple of things. So Tim Ryan has this whole thing in his campaign that I'm actually an out-of-state Californian, even though I was born and raised in this state. And the reason I left when I was 18 was to enlist in the United States Marine Corps. That was the first time I ever left the state of Ohio. I went to Ohio State University. I started a business here. I raised my three small children here. Uh, and, and, and this is a ridiculous accusation from a guy, by the way, 20 years in Washington, who has never actually had to employ people and has never actually created a single job. My business in Ohio has been involved in investing and supporting the creation of nearly a thousand jobs just in our state and jobs elsewhere as well. I believe in investing in our communities and I've actually put my money where my mouth is, taking a big risk by getting out of Silicon Valley and starting a business here in Ohio. And I want to be clear about something. Tim Ryan represents a congressional district that has lost 50,000 jobs just in his time in office. Those of us who create jobs know what it's like when you have bad policies, and we know what it's like when you have good policies. I'd like Tim Ryan to lecture me on my business background a little bit less and maybe explain why the guy who's the biggest fighter of China had his own congressional district lose tens of thousands of good manufacturing jobs to China just in your time in can public I, service. Can I answer that? Yeah. The, the problem is, and you know why we lose jobs like that? Because guys like you, J.D., make money off of investing in China. He, in his first venture capital fund investments, you invested into China. And you have the Which audacity, that, you have the, the one that ships, job, ships jobs from China to manufacture things that go to like, I don't know if it's Vail or some kind of ski resort or something so, like so that. So your so I'm telling gave you this line so and I'm you don't telling, actually know I'm, it. I'm telling you, J.D., you've not denied investing into China. And you're talking about illegal immigrants he has businesses in Ohio that actually hire foreign workers. Do you think we're stupid, J.D., and we're not? I'm just telling you that you are a, you're from Silicon Valley. You don't understand what's going on here in Ohio. You invest in the China. You hire foreign workers. And you are funded by a Silicon Valley billionaire. He gave you $15 million, funded your primary, Mitch McConnell, is giving you $40 million, all corporate money from the corporations who That's ship jobs overseas. Now you want to parachute into Ohio and you want to try to buy a Senate seat. It's not going to work because everybody can sniff it out that Candidates all you want to do and, is be and, senator. And Tim, how many tens of millions of dollars have you gotten from Apple, from Google, from the companies that have shipped a lot of jobs to China? You can't even name the tens company that I allegedly invested in that ships Gentlemen, jobs to China. Gonna, did you, it's did you, it's, a, it's a total. Else no, like did you invest in China? Which company did I invest in? I'm in China? asking you. Did you? Not that I know of. Oh, I have no idea what Here you're talking go. about. Tim. You're going to well, do just fine. Well, I'm sure our fact checkers will determine that. Please do. And we want to ask you while we were on this topic, you have each made some headline-making statements during the campaign. Mr. Vance, in an April interview with Gateway Pundit, you suggested that President Biden is intentionally allowing fentanyl to cross the border in order to target and kill MAGA voters. Do you believe the president is trying to kill people who did not vote for him? Well, I didn't say that he was intentionally killing people. What I said, Colleen, is that his rhetoric on how he views people who didn't vote for him is totally beyond the pale and totally unacceptable. And by the way, Tim Ryan, who runs all these TV commercials saying that he wants to appeal to Trump voters, wants to appeal to Republicans, also says that he wants to <clears throat> kill and confront what is it, the MAGA movement, Tim? That's not exactly the rhetoric of a unifier. What I do think is that the end result of Joe Biden's policies and the end result of his rhetoric is that, one, we hate each other a lot more than we did two years ago. That's a significant failure of leadership. And yes, the fentanyl crisis is way worse than it was two years ago. Why is it way worse? Because Tim Ryan and Joe Biden have conspired together to reject every 
border wall funding proposal, to reject every proposal to cut off the amnesty, to reject every proposal that would actually secure our border and stop Thanks, the Mr. flow Vance. of these illegal drugs. Thanks, Mr. Vance. Congressman Ryan, we want to get to you here. Uh, it was alluded to, but on MSNBC, you said Americans need to, quote, kill and confront the extremist movement within the GOP. In the past, you've condemned Donald Trump's rhetoric as having the possibility to incite violence. Is that similar language that you once condemned? Movement. Kill and confront the extremist movement, of which J.D. Vance, unfortunately, is a part of, right? Who says that the President of the United States is intentionally trying to kill people with fentanyl? Who says that the election was stolen? J.D. Vance does. Who runs around with Ron DeSantis, the governor of Florida, who wants to ban books? You're running around with Lindsey Graham, who wants a national abortion ban. You're running around with Marjorie Taylor Greene, who's the absolute looniest politician in America. This is a dangerous group, and we do need to confront it. And that's why I'm running to represent the exhausted majority, Democrats, Republicans, and independents Candidates. against the extremists. We are going to turn now to foreign policy. Last week, President Biden made the shocking claim that we are on the verge of Armageddon. The reason being Vladimir Putin's threat to use nuclear weapons in Ukraine. So this question is for both of you. If that were to happen, if Putin were to use nuclear weapons, how should the United States respond? And we begin with you, Congressman Ryan. Well, it would have to be a, a, an aggressive response. I don't think we're at that point where Vladimir Putin will. I hope he doesn't. We should be prepared for all contingencies should he do that. And it should be a swift and significant response. We cannot have a butcher like Vladimir Putin rolling into Ukraine. What he's done there is an absolute atrocity. And the fact that he's killed innocent people, innocent women, innocent girls, is, is, is so heartbreaking. And the fact that guys like J.D. Vance have said, I don't care what's going on in Ukraine. I will tell you, I've been to Parma, I've been to Cleveland, I've met with the refugees. You know who I meet with? The women and the daughters and sons? Because the husbands are in Ukraine fighting. That's the kind of freedom we need to support. And J.D. Vance would let Putin roll right through Ukraine. And I'm just telling you that we've got to have a strong military, and we've got to make sure that we can push back people like Vladimir Putin if they try to invade a freedom-loving country. And J.D. Vance is weak on this. Same question to you then, sure. Mr. Vance. How should we respond if Vladimir Putin uses nuclear weapons in Ukraine? So the answer is that nobody knows how we should respond if he uses nuclear weapons. Now, let me just address this. What Vladimir Putin did was disgusting and wrong, and we all have to admire what the Ukrainians have done as they've repelled this invasion. But let's just take stock of something that Tim Ryan said. And Tim, I don't think that you mean, meant anything by it, but I want to hone in on this because it reflects the failure of the bipartisan foreign policy establishment in our country. The same people who got us into Iraq and the same people who got us into Afghanistan for 20 years. He said that if Vladimir Putin uses nuclear weapons, we should have a strong response. What exactly does that mean? Does that mean we're in a nuclear shooting war? I have three kids, and I'm running to be the United States Senator for the state of Ohio. I want to protect those children, and I want a foreign policy establishment that puts the interest of our citizens first. What everybody has been doing, and I've been at the very forefront of this, saying we need to de-escalate the situation. Vladimir Putin launching nuclear weapons against Ukraine is something we have to do everything possible to prevent. And right now, everybody seems to be, everybody in the Biden administration at least, seems to be sleepwalking into a nuclear war. That is the worst possible thing that could happen. We have to do everything to prevent it. Thank I think you. this is, uh, just quickly, because this is an important point here. If J.D. had his way, Putin would be through Ukraine at this point. He'd be going into Poland. Like, we, if he's using nuclear weapons, what do, you, what do you want us to do? I mean, you can't just send, send hopes and prayers. If I had now, my I hope way, it, I hope you'd it put does. money at the southern border Honey, if you, if you, instead of launching tons of money into Ukraine. Thank you, Kenneth. We do want to we want to continue border, on baby. foreign policy here. We want to move to another part of the globe. President Biden also recently made headlines saying he would use American military force to defend Taiwan if China were to attack. The question, again, goes to both of you. Should America defend Taiwan? Congressman Ryan, we start with you. I believe that we should. I believe that we should. This is, uh, you know, we have a commitment. Again, 
we do not want to be at war with China. We need to outcompete them economically. We need to make sure that we invest into the United States and outcompete them. But we do have commitments, and that's why I have always supported. Uh, strong investments into our defense, including President Trump's defense budget, President Trump's uh, initiative with the Space Force. We've got to continue to invest into our Navy. Love to get the ship, uh, you know, repairs uh, done here in, in Lorain, Ohio, and in Lordstown, Ohio, where we're talking about making sure we can take our ships out. The problem now, we take a ship out of the water, it's got four years before we can fix it and rebuild it. So we have these commitments, but we've got to have a strong military. We've got to have a strong defense because you never know what circumstance we're going to be in. And I will tell you that China is no joke. They are investing heavily into their military, and you can't see it all. Thank you, Congressman. Mr. Vance, same question. Should the United States militarily defend Taiwan if they're attacked by China? Yes, yeah, so Taiwan's a much different situation from Russia and Ukraine because of how important it is to American national security. Now, the policy of this country, bipartisan, by the way, over 40 years, was strategic ambiguity. The idea is that we wouldn't commit to doing one thing or the other, but everybody recognized that we would try to do something, maybe not send military troops in a ground war, but we would do something to try to defend Taiwan. The thing we we need to do is get ourselves in a position where we don't have to rely on the Chinese and the Taiwanese in the first place. The reason why Taiwan is different is because they make so many of our semiconductors, our computer chips. The entire modern economy would collapse without it. We've got to bring that stuff back to this country. Rob Portman, Tim mentioned earlier, senator, of course, of our state, a guy who endorsed me and was critical in getting the chips bill passed. That's the sort of policy you need to break our reliance on China. It's a great piece of legislation. We just got to go much further so we don't have to defend island countries if it's not in our core national interest. Gentlemen, we're going to switch topics once again. And our next topic is LGBTQ plus rights. And for our question, you take a look at your monitor candidates. We send it to Nisha Pettyholm from the Next Star Station WDTN in Dayton. Equality Ohio says there are more than a half million LGBTQ plus citizens living here. Outgoing Senator Rob Portman is co-sponsoring the Marriage Equality Act that will codify same-sex marriage. Are you ready to support that bill? Why or why not? Mr. Vance, we start with you. Yeah, so I've come out against this bill, and I don't think it's actually about gay marriage. It's not about same-sex marriage or same-sex equality. Look, gay marriage is the law of the land in this country, and I'm not trying to do anything to change that. But if you look at the specific bill that's being proposed, it wouldn't just codify something that's already enacted in law. It would actually make it easier for both the government and a lot of private parties to sue religious organizations if those religious organizations don't comply with the dictates of the federal government. I'm a, I'm a devout Christian, and I think it's important to protect religious liberty in this country. We remember about 10 years ago when the, when the Obama administration, I'm sure supported by Tim Ryan, went after a group of Catholic nuns because that Catholic nunnery wanted to run its organization the way that, that confirmed with its religious beliefs. That should be okay in this country. And the problem with this legislation is it's going to unleash a wave of litigation against our churches, our religious organizations, our mosques, our synagogues, everything. That's why I don't think it's a great idea. Thank you, Mr. Vance. Congressman Ryan, same question. Yeah, I voted for that in the House of Representatives. I will support uh, codifying that into the Senate. But only, only J.D. Vance can say <laughs> that that the bill that codifies same-sex marriage is not about same-sex marriage. Only J.D. You can, you're the only one, J.D. Vance, that can, can actually say that. It's unbelievable. The problem we have here is we have 15,000 marriages uh, here in Ohio. And when you read Justice Thomas's opinion on abortion, which J.D. Vance wants to celebrate, it also included in there nullifying these marriages, and it also included in there getting rid of uh, protections around birth control. This is what I'm trying to explain to Ohioans, that J.D. Vance is extreme on these issues. No exceptions for rape or incest. He called rape inconvenient. He said he denied it, but it's on tape, right? Now he says he's not for same-sex marriage. He's going right down the line with the absolute most extremists, the guys who want to ban books and everything else. Those are the guys you bring into the state to campaign for you, J.D. These are extreme positions that Ohioans are rejecting. Well, uh, I want to just point on? out something about what Tim Very Ryan... Very quickly, sir. <laughs> yes, Colleen. <laughs> thank you. I want to point out something that Tim Ryan just did. One, I answered the question about same-sex marriage and I identified very specifically a couple of problems with the legislation. Tim didn't address that. He just pretended that it didn't 
exist. Because here's the problem with Tim Ryan. He spent 20 years in Washington, D.C. He actually doesn't care about the details of public policy, and I'm sure he didn't even read the bill that he voted on. What he does is he reads the canned lines that his consultants give him. You could respond to the argument that I made, Tim. Instead, you decided to pretend again that I have views I don't actually hold, so you can't. Look, it's insulting. Voters deserve somebody who actually respects their views and speaks honestly to them about the issues. That's not what Tim's doing tonight. We want to get something else on the record while we're on this topic. Uh, the Senate has a unique role of confirming Supreme Court nominees. Marriage equality, as the congressman mentioned, could be revisited by the Supreme Court. Will that be a litmus test for you if you are in the position of evaluating a Supreme Court nominee, and we begin with you, Mr. Vance. I don't like any litmus test for any Supreme Court nominations. I just want good judges who interpret the Constitution. That's what I really want. And look, Tim Ryan just accused me of being extreme on the LGBT issue. This is a guy who voted just a couple of months ago, right, for the Equality Act, the so-called Equality Act that would literally remove federal funding for free and reduced lunch programming for schools that don't let biological males participate in biological female sports. The extremist here, Tim, is you. And again, I don't expect you to actually answer the substance of what I said, but let's just at least be honest with voters about what our actual views are. And we are on the litmus test question, and you can respond to him on that as well. Yeah, I, I will have a litmus test. I will have a litmus test on Roe v. Wade. I'll have a litmus test on uh, the same-sex marriage. I'll have a litmus test on birth control. We cannot keep going down this road of taking away rights. The Dobbs decision was the absolute first decision where the Supreme Court is taking rights away from people. That's it's not right. You know, we don't want doctors in our bedrooms. We don't want doctors uh, in our, in our, uh, uh, doc or, uh, I'm sorry, politicians in our bedrooms and politicians in our doctor's offices. That's not what we want. And that's what, that's what this group of people who have taken over the Supreme Court and taken over state legislatures want, they want control. They want to control women. They want to tell you what kind of marriage you can have. They want to tell you whether or not you can use birth control. And look, the reality of it is we got to get the government out of a lot of these decisions and let the local governments make the, the school and the education decisions. Thank you, candidates. We are going to move on to another topic, immigration. It's something that comes up a lot on the campaign trail. It's come up a lot already tonight, and it's something you may have a chance to weigh in on if you're elected to the Senate. Uh, we begin with Representative Ryan. You recently did an interview with our Columbus station calling for continued construction of parts of a border wall where you say, where experts say uh, it makes sense. You don't hear many Democrats calling for continued construction of a wall. In fact, when former President Trump proposed the wall, you're one of the Democrats who called it a, quote, vanity project. What changed? Well, I think to have a wall from sea to sh shining sea doesn't make any sense. You can't put a wall in the middle of the Rio Grande River. But if you can put a barrier up somewhere that can prevent people from coming over, I'm all for it. But El Chapo digs under that uh, barrier as well, which is why I've always supported increased funding for Border Patrol. I started the Border Technology Caucus to figure out how we can use technology that we have in the United States to prevent this fentanyl from coming in that goes from China to Mexico into the country, and now even more so with rainbow fentanyl, which is scary for so many people. It's got to be a comprehensive approach. And then figure out who's in the country, right? If they're here, pay a fine, pay back taxes, you know, pass a background check, and come into the country. I also have a resolution designating fentanyl as a weapon of mass destruction so we could have a whole of government approach making sure we stop it. This is in contrast to our guy here who is investing into companies that hire foreign workers, has a real tough position on immigration, and then he hires people and in in, invests in companies that hire foreign workers. Real tough position on China, and then he invests in China and manufactures products and sends them back. Thank you, Congressman. Uh, Mr. Vance, we want to get to you. We have a question for you on this. You call for reform to our legal immigration system as well on your website, but you say we should only allow immigrants in if they contribute, quote, something meaningful to our country. How would you define what is meaningful? Can you give specifics? Well, I think skills and ability to learn or already know the English language, that's all very important. I'm a big fan of what Tom Cotton has proposed called the RAISE Act. But look, I mean, the illegal immigration problem I know very personally, and I've been affected by it very personally. Uh, my mom 
uh, struggled with addiction for a big chunk of my early childhood. And I'm very proud to say, by the way, uh, she's been clean and sober for seven years. I'm sure she's watching right now. I love you, Mom. Um, but one of the great blessings for our family is that we got a second chance with Mom. We got that seven years clean and sober because the poison that's being, that was coming into the country, thank God, 15 years ago, was not nearly as dangerous as the poison that's coming into the country today. Tim Ryan has done nothing to stop the flow of fentanyl. He talks about wanting to support a stronger border. He talks about wanting to be bipartisan and get things done. Well, Tim, you've been in Congress for 20 years, and the border problem has got worse and worse and worse. I don't care about what you want to do, Tim. I care about what have you done? What have you actually done to reduce the flow of fentanyl so that people like my family are not as affected by this terrible addiction crisis? That's the thing I really, really worry about here is that, look, we all agree, okay, we want a strong border. We want to make sure El Chapo does get it. Of course we believe those things. Tim Ryan has had 20 years to get something done, and he just hasn't done it. And so Congressman I, Ryan, we're going to give you a chance to answer okay. that as well as our next question, which is that the Vice President Kamala Harris said just last month that the southern border is secure. So do you agree with her, and how do you respond to the accusations that just came from Mr. Vance? Kamala Harris is absolutely wrong on that. It's not secure. We have a lot of work to do. I'm not here to just get in a fight or just toe the Democratic Party line. I'm here to speak the truth. We do have more work to do, which is why I have a resolution to designate fentanyl as a weapon of mass destruction, which is why I vote for more border patrol, why, why I vote for a barrier, why I vote for technology and started the Border Technology Caucus. So that's what I have done. You know what I haven't done? I didn't start a fake nonprofit pretending like I was going to help people with addiction like J.D. Vance did. Literally started a nonprofit and didn't spend one nickel on anybody. In fact, he brought in somebody from Purdue Pharma to be the spokesperson for the nonprofit. The same drug company, Big Pharma, the big drug company that had all the pill mills going, got everybody addicted. <clears throat> One million people died, JD. One million people died. And you started a nonprofit to try to take advantage of people in Ohio. And you know what? All you did with it was launch your political career. His so, campaign manager worked for that nonprofit. He ran a poll to check his own standing from that nonprofit. I'm not going to take a backseat to you or anybody else on fentanyl drugs or immigration or anything else. No, Somebody that would, what kind no, of man would start a fake nonprofit thank you, to Congress. try to deal no, with addiction by, by and way, not spend any money on anybody? No, no, none of this is true, of course. And, here, true. and, here, and here's, the, here's the problem with what Tim Ryan said. It's shameful for you attack, to attack me given that my family was affected by this problem. I put $80,000 of my own money into that nonprofit organization, Tim, and it absolutely did help people. Now, here's the thing. If you're in Ohio and you've seen these ridiculous commercials that Tim Ryan runs telling dishonest truths, dishonest lies about my nonprofit organization, it's paid by pharmaceutical blood money because the very same corporations that caused this poison to come into our country in the first place have funded your campaign to the tune of tens of thousands of dollars. Why are the people who've gotten rich off the opioid epidemic funding Tim Ryan and attacking me? The answer is obvious because this guy is the biggest fan of pharma and he's the biggest fan of illegal pharma, which is the Mexican drug cartels that are bringing this poison into our country. I just need a chance to respond to that. Right. My Very record quickly. is impeccable on, Clearly it's on not, Tim. pharmaceuticals and taking on big pharma. Okay? Is that why they when give we, you tens of thousands we, of dollars? We pa I, I don't vote with them. I don't vote with them. But you do take their money. Just a couple weeks ago, we passed a uh, Medicare reform provision that for the first time in decades, we will be able to negotiate down drug prices. Big Pharma didn't like that. Fought it tooth and nail, I voted against them. We capped prescription drug costs in the Medicare program for seniors to $2,000. My mom falls into the donut hole. She'll pay 1000 a month in prescription drugs. We capped it to 2000 a year. I helped get that passed. I took on the pharmaceutical company Insulin. We got it to 35 bucks for Medicare recipients. I fought for that, and I got it. So. Time and time again, I have voted against the pharmaceutical, but this is the smoke and mirrors that our guy likes to put up here. You started a sham nonprofit, didn't do anything, and had a spokesperson who was a mouthpiece for Big Pharma. It's Doesn't time now to move on to, to our next course, topic, that I out candidates. The tens of of dollars that he gets. Our next topic, the recent fatal police shootings of Jalen Walker in Akron and Donovan Lewis in Columbus sparked renewed concern and fear of law enforcement in communities of color. Many activists call for a complete overhaul of policing in America. Mr. Vance, back in 2017, you said, quote, 
there are legitimate concerns that a lot of black Americans have that they're not treated fairly by some members of the police. It has been five years since you said that. Is that still your position today? Well, of course, Colleen. I mean, look, I've, I've talked to a number of police officers, and, you know, one of the interesting things I've heard from our police officers, and, of course, I've been endorsed by the statewide fraternal order of police, uh, because during the rioting a couple of years ago, Tim Ryan threw these guys under the bus, and I didn't. But one of the things I hear from them is that they want to do more community policing. They actually want to do more engagement, whether it's black, white, or brown, with people in the community that they're actually trying to keep safe. The problem is it's really hard to do that when you're 25 percent, 30 percent understaffed. So we've got to increase funding for law enforcement. We've got to protect law enforcement. And we've got to do something that Tim Ryan failed to do, which is stop the leadership of this country from going after quality. Qualified immunity. Here's what qualified immunity does it provides legal protections for our police officers when they do their jobs. They need that so that they can attract the right people and so that they can focus on keeping people safe, not litigation from ridiculous activists. I think if we empower our law enforcement, look, you're always going to have bad apples. 99% of our cops are great people. If we make their job easier, we're actually going to allay the concerns of a lot of heavily policed communities. We're also going to make all of us less, or all of us more safe. Uh, Congressman Ryan, along those same lines, in many cities, police departments are struggling. A crime is going up, but the number of police officers is going down. Amid this increased scrutiny that he alluded to, officers are retiring early and police departments are having problems attracting new police officers. So what's the solution to that problem? Well, I've tried to be a part of the solution here. We need more cops. We need better paid cops. And yeah, we've got to get rid of bad cops. We need more technology and equipment. I've brought back almost $500 million dollars for law enforcement here in Ohio. And when I get to the Senate, I will continue to do that. I was the lead advocate for putting money into the rescue package for state and local government. Governor DeWine is now going around the state passing out money for law enforcement. That's federal money. I agree that the governor should do that, and I'm glad he's doing it, but that's federal money that I helped get into that bill so that law enforcement has the resources they need, and we have to keep helping out. But I will say this. I am not going to take a back seat to J.D. Vance on law enforcement or anything else for that matter. The fact that on January 6th, we had 140 cops, United States Capitol Police, get injured during the insurrection when they tried to overthrow the government, beat them upside the head with lead pipes, spray them with pepper spray. The one video we saw, the cop got jammed into the, the door, right? J.D. Vance raised money for the legal defense fund of the insurrectionists. This is the kind of extremism, J.D., that we wholly reject. You have video posts. Don't even try to deny it. We got, we, we got, your, we got your Twitter posts and everything else. Everybody's seen it. He said, help these guys with their legal defense fund. Now, you, can you imagine one guy saying out of one side of his mouth he's pro-cop, and out of the other side of his mouth he's raising money for the insurrectionists who are beating up the Capitol Police? The one guy he tried to raise money for got four years in prison. This is ridiculous. I'm not taking a back seat to you. I brought $500 million back to fund police in Ohio. So, I, you know, I've, I've, got a, I've got three little kids, including a two-year-old, and one of the things that's true of toddlers and is also apparently true of career politicians is that they accuse you of doing the very thing that they do themselves all the time. At the me? height, Did at the not? height, Tim, <laughs> of the BLM riots, I've condemned political violence, whether it comes from the left or the right, but at the height that. of the BLM riots where they were rioting and looting and burning down America's cities, Ohio cities and small towns, Tim Ryan threw the police under under the bus. He attacked them as the new Jim Crow, as systemically racist, and he voted for legislation that would have stripped funding from them and redirected it towards litigation defense. This is another example of Tim Ryan talking about what he would like to do. Tim, you, you don't sound too bad. If you actually tried to do the things you talk about wanting to do, you wouldn't be half bad. The problem is you got 20 years and you failed to do any of it. All right, thank you, candidates. We are now going to move on to our next topic. And for that, we turn once again to Nisha Petty home from our next star station in Dayton, WDTN. Gentlemen, if you'll look at your monitor. Polling has indicated Americans are increasingly concerned about threats to our democracy. We pose that question to you. What do you feel is the biggest threat to democracy right now? And Congressman Ryan, this goes first to you. I, th I think it's extremism that we saw during the insurrection, and you could see that J.D. didn't answer it. He did raise money for the insurrectionists. 
He's all in with those people who are, are the election deniers, who call into question the f most fundamental act we have, the foundation of this country. He's called into question the, the presidential election. That's a threat to our democracy, and running around with people who want to ban books and get the government in our bedroom and in our doctor's offices. But I tell you what I think politically is, is a huge threat to our democracy. It, and that's guys that don't have the guts to stand up to their own party, okay? Now, I've run against Nancy Pelosi. I have taken on Bernie Sanders. I have opposed Joe Biden on numerous pieces of uh, legislation that he wants to try to promote and push. And I've agreed with Donald Trump on trade, re renegotiating NAFTA, uh, being firmer on China, defense, General Mattis being Secretary of Defense, and all the rest. And I think the problem is, when you have guys like J.D. Vance who can't stand up to anybody, like just a few weeks ago in, in Youngstown, on the stage, uh, Donald Trump said to J.D. Vance, all you do is kiss my ass to get my support. He said that. That's bad, because that means J.D. Vance is going to do whatever he wants. Mitch McConnell's given him $40 million. He's going to do what he wants. And Peter Thiel gave him a $15 million. He's going to do what he wants. And here's the thing that's most troubling about this, lack of courage, is that after Trump took J.D. Vance's dignity from him on the stage in Youngstown, J.D. Vance got back up on stage and said, start shaking his hand, take a picture, saying, hey, aren't we having a great time here tonight? I don't know anybody I grew up with, I don't know anybody I went to high school with that would allow somebody to take their dignity like that and then get back up on stage. We need leaders who have courage to take on their own party. And I've proven that, and he was called an ass kisser by the former president. The question so is I, the biggest threat to democracy. Sure. If you would like to answer that first, and then you can respond to some of his accusations. So I, I will answer the question, Colleen, because I think it's important for the voters for us to actually answer the questions. But first of all, I'm not going to take lectures on dignity and self-respect from a guy caught on video kissing up to Chuck Schumer and begging him for a promotion to his next job. That's the kind of guy that Tim Ryan is. Now, he just said, it's so funny, we're getting close to Halloween, and Tim Ryan is put on a costume where he pretends to be a reasonable moderate. But in fact, he, he said he stands up to his own party. The last two Congresses, Tim, you voted for Nancy Pelosi and Joe Biden 100%. You consistently tow the party line on every single issue. I wish that you were the reasonable moderate. You said you were, because then Youngstown may have not lost 50,000 manufacturing jobs during your, during your 20 years. On the threat to democracy, Colleen, so he just accused me of being an election denier. This is a term that Democrats throw around. Here's the thing I've said about the 2020 election, and it really implicates big tech. I think we have great elections in the state of Ohio, and I encourage everybody, even if you're going to vote for this guy, to get out there and vote by November the 8th. But here's the thing. We know, because Facebook has told us, that leadership of the FBI approached Facebook and told them to censor information that was negative about Joe Biden, about Hunter Biden's corrupt business dealings. You cannot have a multinational corporation that's in bed with the communist Chinese that's censoring information about one of America's political parties and doing it in a way that interferes with people's knowledge and ultimately people's votes. That's a threat to democracy. Big tech has way too much power, and it benefits fits the Democrats. Thank you, Mr. Vance. We do want to follow up with you. You are, it's come up here, you're endorsed by and you've been campaigning with former President Donald Trump. He is facing multiple criminal investigations. Is there anything the former president has done that concerns you? I mean, is there anything he's done that's concerned me? Why don't we let the criminal investigations actually play out? Because I was alive during 2016 to 2020, and what I saw was consistently rumors that finally Donald Trump was going to be indicted, that he was going to be accused of something legitimately criminal. Of course, Tim Ryan, despite his commercials, voted to impeach him twice. Uh, I, I have seen nothing that would suggest the President of the United States should be thrown in prison. And most importantly here, if you're going to make accusations like this, the Attorney General of the United States, Merrick Garland, one of the most political actors in the history of American justice, if you want to go after a former president, a, likely, a possible future president, or at least a future political candidate, you've got to tell the American people why. We have really corrupt leadership at, at the Department of Justice, and that's a problem. Congressman Ryan, in a nationwide address, President Biden called the MAGA Republicans the threat to American democracy. Was he right? Those people who storm the Capitol are a threat to the democracy. Those people who say that the election uh, was fraudulent 
are a threat to our democracy. If we lose the, the foundational element of this country, our vote, our elections, then we lose everything. And we got very close to that on January 6, when people wanted to, to kill Mike Pence and overthrow the peaceful tr transition. This is not some throwaway line. And that's what I'm, I, I'm, I want people in Ohio to understand. This is the crowd that J.D. is running around with. The election deniers, the extremists, we, that's not Ohio. That's not Rob Portman. That's not George Voinovich. That's not Sherrod Brown, right? That's, that's, the, 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 that's not for us. He's running with an extreme element here that's for, for, very, for, very dangerous. First of all, Rob Portman endorsed me, of course, and I find it interesting how preoccupied you are with this at a time when people can't afford groceries, people can't afford to walk down the streets safely. Let's focus on the significant issues right now, Tim. Thank you, candidates. Thank you, candidates. We do have one more question on this topic before we move on. It has come up a few times here already. Uh, and this is to both of you. Do you both pledge to accept the results of this Senate election, Mr. Vance? Of course. Mr. Ryan? Yes. In the interest of time, and we are running tight on time, we're going to ask you a few more rapid fire questions, give you each about 20 to 30 seconds to answer so we can get some more topics in. First question, it goes to both of you. Do you support the federal decriminalization of marijuana? Congressman Ryan. I do. I support uh, legalization of marijuana. I think the fact that we spend tens of billions of dollars putting people in prison for marijuana crimes is ridiculous. Uh, we should legalize it, we should tax it, we should use it to fund our schools, and we should make sure we retrain all these people who've had their lives destroyed by going to prison for a marijuana crime. Mr. Vance? Yeah, so one, I think it should be a state's issue. States should make these decisions. Second, I don't want anybody going to prison for smoking a joint. Uh, that's not at all what I want to do. The third thing is we've got to be careful here not to be soft on crime because a lot of times you'll hear somebody thrown in prison for smoking a joint, which I, like I just said, I don't think that's a good idea. That's not something that we should be doing. But that's just true on paper. And if you look at the underlying charge, you'll see it wasn't just that they smoked a joint, it's that they smoked a joint and then beat an elderly woman over the head with a pistol. Those people should go to prison and just having pled down to a so-called nonviolent drug offense, they should still be going to jail. We have to be careful about how we do this. We don't want to be soft on crime for people like that. Mr. Vance, if your party wins the majority, who should be the Senate leader? Look, whoever runs. Uh, I don't want Chuck Schumer to be the Senate Majority Leader, that's for sure. Uh, the guy that Tim Ryan says he wants to be his boss. Presumably Mitch McConnell will run. If somebody else runs, we can have that conversation. But I know I, I don't want to be the Senate Majority Leader. That's Chuck Schumer. Well, I'll go back to you, Mr. Ryan. You told me in an interview about a week ago, and you mentioned it tonight. It's time for the old guard to be gone. You mentioned Nancy Pelosi, Trump, Biden. Should Chuck Schumer be gone as well? Uh, well, I'm going to vote for the person who's going to give the absolute best deal to Ohio. You know, J.D.'s talking about uh, a joke that I made, but the reality of it is I have been a pain in the rear end to Nancy Pelosi. And if Chuck Schumer is the leader, the I will be a pain in the rear end to him, too. I'm for Ohio. I don't kiss anyone's ass like him. Ohio needs an ass kicker. Not an ass kisser. Okay, thank you, candidates. Another a low one, line Another one for you here. Do you believe in term limits at the federal level? We'll start with Mr. Vance. Yeah, absolutely. I think we had term limits. Frankly, we would get career politicians who've never had a real job out of Washington, D.C. when they fail, and they'd have to go get a real job. I think that Youngstown would be much better off if Tim Ryan had to go back to Youngstown and work in the private sector than spend all of his time in Washington, D.C. Congressman Wright. I think term limits are at the ballot box. I'm just going to say something to J.D. Vance. You know, my, my family has done nothing but serve their whole lives. That's where I learned it. My grandfather at his church, he was a lead usher, 1045 Mass, ran the beer tent. My mom helped with the church. My grandmother helped at the church. I'd play on the Our Lady of Mount Carmel playground. My grandfather would be there painting the rectory. You know, we give back. I'm not going to apologize for spending 20 years of my adult life slogging away to try to help one of the hardest economically hit regions of Ohio and dedicated my life to help that region come back. You got to be ashamed of yourself, J.D. You went off to California, you were drinking wine and eating cheese, and you said, I don't even feel comfortable in Ohio anymore. I Gentlemen, to, I, one, I, one so final I'm not, question. I'm not going I'm not going to sit here and let you demean my service okay. that I learned from my family, that when First I went all, to Catholic school, we had to spend time 
going to help people. It was called senior service. I had to put on my football jersey and go serve in the community. Thank this you. is an extension uh, of that. I admire, I admire the spirit Vance. of service. No, what don't. I don't admire is the failure of accomplishment. Look at how Youngstown has done during your leadership. That's what I don't admire. We, we have, gentlemen, we, we have, are just about out of time. We want to have, get have, to have, have, your closing statement, so we thank you both very much. We are going to give each of you one minute here for your closing statements. As agreed, we are going to start with Congressman Ryan. You have 60 seconds. America is a great place. Right? This country has fed more people, clothed more people, cured more people, and liberated more people than all the other countries in the world combined. And we have to rebuild the great American middle class. Ohio has always led the way. We've got great things happening in Ohio. But I met a woman in Marietta who was a single mom who had to travel two hours to work and two hours back. That's who I'm fighting for. That's why we went all in on electric vehicles, where we now have four vehicles in the old General Motors Lordstown plant. We're manufacturing the jobs of the future. Solar panels in Toledo, natural gas in the southeast, the chips manufacturing plant is going to be a blockbuster. Average wage $135,000 a year. Battery plant in the Mahoning Valley. Look, we have an opportunity to be the manufacturing powerhouse of the world, the arsenal of energy. I will never forget where I came from. And if you want to help this campaign, go to timforoh.com, chip in, volunteer. We're going to build a movement of the exhausted majority, Democrats, Republicans, Thank and you, Independents, to move this state into the future. And your final statement, Mr. Vance. Look, 20 years ago, uh, I enlisted in the United States Marine Corps. That very same year, Tim Ryan went to Washington, D.C., where he has been failing at his basic job for 20 years. Talks a big game, but the record of accomplishment just isn't there. I think there's something very basic here. I think that people deserve certain things. Ohioans deserve certain things from their federal leadership. They deserve to go to the grocery store and be able to afford food without it breaking the bank. They deserve streets that you can walk down safely. They deserve a country that has a border. I promise. We may not always agree on everything, but I'll never forget where I came from, and I'll never stop fighting to achieve those things for the people who deserve them. This is such an important election. I'd encourage people to go to JDVance.com and support me. But at, at the end of the day, the question here is whether we need new leadership in this state. Double down on the last two years of failed leadership or take this country in a different direction. I thank you all for listening. I thank you for watching, and I hope to earn your vote. God bless you guys. Thank you, Mr. Vance. And that concludes tonight's Ohio United States Senate debate. Thank you once again to both candidates for participating. And thank you for joining us across the state of Ohio. From all of us here at WJW-TV Studios in Cleveland, have a good evening.